boys and girls, and welcome to Bible Story Time. I am so glad that we get to be together once again. I hope that you are enjoying the sunshine that we're having today and the beautiful weather. Today, we get to learn a new memory verse. Today, we will learn G, God is love, 1 John 4, 8. But before we learn about God being love, let's review our memory verses that we've been going over. We began with A, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3, 23. What I love about this is if you know your alphabet, it helps you remember which verse because A, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that brings us to B, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, Acts 16, 31. And then we have C, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right, Ephesians 6, 1. And D, depart from evil and do good, Psalm 34, 14. E, every good and perfect gift is from above, James 1, 17. F, fear not, for I am with you, Isaiah 43, 5. And that brings us to G. G, God is love, 1 John 4, 8. So as you know your alphabet, and I know you all do, that will help us remember our memory verses because the first letter of the first word begins with a letter of the alphabet and we go in order. We're gonna go all the way from A to Z and we will have memorized many verses and the importance of memorizing verses cannot be underestimated because as we hide God's word in our heart and it's in our mind, then we will not sin against the Lord. And that is the desire of my heart so that you will know forever that you don't have to be afraid because God is with you, that God loves you, that every good and perfect gift is from above, that we've all sinned and fall short of God's glory, but if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be saved. So all of this is instruction for our lives and for our walks with the Lord. So before we begin learning about G, God is love, let me see your hands. Open, shut them, open, shut them, give a little clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them, put them in your lap, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the sun that's shining and the birds that are singing. We thank you that we can run outside and play. We thank you for beautiful flowers and green grass. And we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that every good and perfect gift is from above. And we thank you that you are love. I pray that you'd be with us all as we learn what this means today and that we would truly know and truly understand that you are love and may that change the way we love each other and the way that we love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen. All right, boys and girls, G, God is love. 1 John 4, 8. Do you know what I love about this verse? Well, it's short and that makes it easy to memorize, doesn't it? God is love. We can all memorize that. G, God is love, 1 John 4, 8. But oh, how very important it is. It's super duper important for our minds and hearts to understand that our God is love. Now, God, think about God for a moment. Our creator, our heavenly father, our provider, the God who always has been and always will be our eternal God our all-knowing God, the one who knows all things. He is the one who causes the sun to rise and he calls each star by name. Did you know that? That our God has a name for each and every star and he calls them out one by one. He knows everything from the giant galaxies that he put in place and in motion to the tiniest microorganism that we cannot see with our eyes. He created it all. He created me and he created you. Our God is, well, that is a state of being verb. 
He is. He doesn't change. He was, he is, and he will be. He is forever. He is, what is he? Well, the Bible says that God is love. His love is everlasting. His love is giving, protecting, and providing. His love is forgiving, and he sees the best in us, and he loves us. You know what I find amazing? Is that he sees the worst in us, and he still loves us, because God is love. He has a great plan for us, and he works out all things for our good kind of love. So God is love, 1 John. Four, eight. We are going to take a look at a few verses, a few verses that tell us who God is and what does it mean for God to be love? Because if we don't know what love is, then we don't understand the verse that God is love. So let's take a look at Isaiah 43, 1. Let's take a look at this love. This verse says, do not be afraid. For I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Well, isn't this an amazing verse? It's an amazing verse because God tells us once again, we don't have to fear. Why? Because he has ransomed us. He has called us by name. We are his. There's a whole bunch packed up into that little verse there. You know, we are God's. Well, first, because he created us. And second, because he ransomed us. What does it mean to ransom? Ransom means to buy back. Well, how did God buy us back? Well, he bought us back with the precious blood shed by his son, Jesus. So he created us, he made us, he formed us, the Bible says, while we were in our mother's wombs. And he ransomed us, he bought us back with the blood of Jesus. He says, I have called you by name. Did you know that God knows your name? He does. That's how much he loves you. You are important to him. Now, it also says, you are mine. You and I, we belong to our heavenly father. We're his. You know, we all want to be a part of some, something, a group, love, a family, a friendship. We want to be a part. And we have to realize and understand that we are God's. We belong to him. So the Bible verse says, do not be afraid for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. So if you ever feel not important or down, I want you to remember that God created you. He bought you with the precious blood of Jesus and he calls you by name. He knows your name, the creator of the heavens and the stars and the mountains and the valleys and the oceans. He knows your name. Now, the next verse I would like to look at is 29 of Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not disaster to give you a future and a hope. And in those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Now this verse also tells us about God's love. And I find it amazing that this wonderful, encouraging verse, a verse to encourage the hearts of any, anyone and everyone who will believe it, well, it was sent at a time before exile. You see, the Israelites were going to be taken from their homeland and exiled to Babylon. It was a consequence for their generations of sin and idolatry. But God wanted them to know that he had plans for them, not to harm them, but to give them a future and a hope. His plans were for their good. And so too, God has good plans for you and for me to give us a future and a hope. No matter what might be going on right now in our world and in our home and in our neighborhoods or schools, God wants us to know that he has good plans for us. And 
All we have to do is pray to him and he will listen. Have you ever tried to talk to somebody and they don't listen? Maybe they're tuning you out because they're doing something else. Or maybe they say, I don't have time right now. And you feel like nobody listens. Well, the Lord always listens. The Bible says that uh, God says, I will listen. He will listen. He listens to us when he talks to us, when we talk to him. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. If we ever want to find our Lord, our Father in heaven, all we have to do is look. And if we ever want to talk to him, he's always available and he listens. So that is another way God loves us. Another thing I want to look at as we learn about God's love for us is something from the New Testament, from the book of 1 Corinthians. Remember our verse that we're memorizing says, God is love, 1 John 4, 8. God is love, three simple words with so much meaning. 1 Corinthians 13 explains or defines what love is. Now let's take a look. We will begin at verse four. It says, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Well, this verse tells us what love is. It also tells us what love is not. But you see, God is love. So God is patient and God is kind. God rejoices in the truth, but it does, he does not rejoice in injustice. God's love never gives up. Do you know God always loves you? He always and forever loves you. His love, the Bible says, is everlasting. That means there's nothing that you can do so horribly wrong and awful that he will ever stop loving you because God loves you. He just loves you because he is love. And you know, there's nothing so wonderfully amazing that you could ever do that would make him love you more because he loves you just as you are. He loves you because he is love. Now, that brings us security. It brings us confidence because we don't have to perform, but we just get to love. We get to love and be loved. And then God has his way in us and works in us to make us more like him so that we can become kind and patient, so that we can be not rude or proud, so that we can rejoice in the truth, so that we will never give up and never lose faith, so that we can always be hopeful and that we can endure through all things. God loves us with that kind of love and he fills us with that kind of love and through the Holy Spirit's power then we can love him with that kind of love and learn to love each other with that kind of love. God is love. Remember his love is forever. His love is not based upon what you do or don't do. He loves you and that gives us great confidence. Our hope and our trust can be all placed in God our Father, who takes care of us, who provides for us, who watches over us, who listens to us, who loves us so much he doesn't take his eyes off us. And hopefully that motivates us to love him in return. 1 John 4, 8, God, is love. Let me see your hands. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Give a little clap. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Put them in your lap. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you and we thank you that you 
our love. We ask that you would teach us what that means every day that we would learn a little bit more about your love and how you love us. And I pray for each one of us that that would motivate us, that that would encourage us to love you in return and that it would teach us how to love each other with a patient love, with a kind love, with a love not based on performance, uh, but a love based on goodness and truth and righteousness. So I pray for each of us that you would fill us with your love and that we would love you and love one another. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.